expectation. It's the devil. The same devil that's in the details. Yet when one sees a brand, one that rises above the noise and clamor, we wonder, how did they do that? What insights did they have that the rest of us missed? It comes down to something special. Skills. Skills, Skills we discover in inspired leadership, plus an unusual attention to details and an ability to see to see where things intersect and how to transform those intersections into something new something inspired something beyond expectation so why do some of us fail in exceeding expectation the problem lies in doing what's expected whereas it's the unexpected that lies in those details that anticipates our next need that leaves us wondering how did they know that only then do we excel which itself is the foundation of excellence This expected is what we learned yesterday. Yet it's the unexpected that gives each of us and our brands our tomorrow. Welcome to Lunch Times on LinkedIn Live. I'm Rhett Power, your host. I'm doing a program every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 12 noon Eastern Standard Time on LinkedIn's new live platform. I'll be talking to today's leaders, best-selling authors, CEOs, corporate leaders, and people who are generally doing good stuff in the world uh, to find out their secrets to success and their habits that, that can help us all be better, uh, better people, better, better in business. Uh, and so the fun part is that this is an interactive show. We can take questions from you. So make sure you ask uh, David and myself your questions. Uh, we can't be interactive if you don't ask. Uh, and we want to uh, share this, this time with you. Uh, and then we're also simulcasting on uh, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and YouTube with the help of Social Lives platform. Uh, so if you like the program, give us a like or share uh, and spread the word so that other people can learn. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to learn from one of the best. Uh, you know, David is, uh, what can you say? He's one of the top branding experts in the world. He's won over 330 something odd awards in the industry for branding, rebrands, design, brand strategy. His book, uh, if, if you're in the in marketing or branding world, it's considered the Bible and it's called Brand Intervention. 30 three steps to transform the brand you have to the brand you need. He's also the uh, author of Defying Gravity, Rising Above the Noise, which I thought was actually pretty good too. He writes for Fast Company and a slew of other publications, and he's worked with some of the biggest names in the business, uh, brands and cities and startups and people like Damon John and Grant Cardone. And he's a, he, he's a uh, I don't know if it's self-proclaimed David, but it's Chief Gravity Defier, and welcome to the show, David Breyer. Thank you very much for having me, first of all. And uh, and I think that you and I kind of had the goal that this was going to like be the most the, the best episode in the history of the world. I think we had like some small goal like that, something like that, something like which that. Is, which is awesome. I mean, I I always I love shooting big, you know, going wanted, for the going for the stars. I wanted to be an astronaut, so that that fits, you know. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, hey, man, thank you for joining me today. It's, it's a real pleasure. Um, you know, I, I want to ask you a bunch of questions about the book and about branding and 
and all of that stuff. But I uh, wanted to start out by, you know, what is something we don't know about David Breyer? Oh God. Well, I'll throw, I'll throw a couple of things that come to mind. One is, is the fact I, and this is very funny to me. Now, not everybody knows that I am, that I was a fine artist, painter, and an artist when I was in my teens. Okay. Didn't know that. So very few people know that. So I even have in our walls in our office, I even have people come in and they're like, oh, I love that painting of George Harrison. I said, yeah, I did that when I was 16. Oh, I love that painting. of So I was inspired by the fine artists of the of the of the great of the great Renaissance era, but I, of course, my subject matters. My subject matter was my the contemporary heroes and of my day. You know the rock stars. The you know so I have paintings of Ringo Starr and George Harrison and uh, Paul McCartney and Ian Anderson from Jethro Tull and was, so these was these it are the classic kind of painting or was it modern? What what, what was the you gotta, you gotta show. You gotta show and tell. Got, all right, all right. I'm gonna, I, 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 I have. I'm gonna pull this off the wall just to show you. He did. He pulled it off the wall. Look at that. This yeah. is, this is, this I painted when I was about, I don't know, probably about 16 years old. That's George. It. That's oil painting. And that's the and this this one is a monochromatic one. I'll hang it back up later. I'll just put it over here for now. But but so very few people know that. And funny enough, because I focus so much on branding and building companies and brand messaging and all that kind of stuff, I have actually had people who who get this, and they say and they say, you know what? We love what we've read. We actually we want to hire you to actually help us do our rebrand or help us relaunch our brand or or whatever. Um, and they say, by the way, so, so they say, and so when we get past the brand story part, who, um, who do you, who do you hire for design? I said, who do I hire for design? You're looking at who you're hiring for design. It's like the fact that it's like, obviously somehow they missed the fact that this is not only, I didn't only write this, I designed this and all the pieces in it and the book itself. I wanted it to be a complete experience. I didn't want it to just be I mean, look. I know you're uh, you're a, a definite avid reader, as am I. One beef of mine when I wrote it was to I would find myself reading 250 page, 300 page, uh, 300 page books that would have I'd find the 10 pages in there. Some during this whole thing, I'd find right. the 10 pages right. that had the sauce. Right. It was like that's what I came to get. Right. You go so to the pages. Way, <laughs> yeah. There was either way too much foreplay. Or there was like, or whatever, but it was kind of like, it's like, give, give me that. So my whole premise of my book was I only wanted to have, I wanted to have a, flat, a fat free book with like no, no fluff, zero bullshit. Um, and that was the basic thing. You get your takeaways like that, right? Well, oh, well, that's a, that's a, well, see people freak out when they, when they see this, this is how the book is actually designed. <laughs> Makes you feel like you're on the like a you know you're a fifth grader. You're like, right? <laughs> oh yeah. Well, 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 well. It was very interesting when I was just finalizing it. My daughter, who's a millennial, I said, I said, Kate, and she's also an entrepreneur. I said, Hey, Katie. I, I said, Does this make sense? This part, I just I wanted to kind of get like an someone who was impartial. I said, What What do you think? And she read it, and she goes, Oh, I love that. And she goes, Oh. And then when she looked at the design, so she first read the content. Then when she then when she looked at the design, she goes, and I love the layout. I said, well, she goes, you get me. I said, what do you mean I get you? She goes, it's like a tweet. <laughs> and I'm like, perfect. That's what I was going for. <laughs> so, yeah. That's so it's a, like, it, it's just bam. It's like, it's the chunks. Well, that must be, I mean, I that, that actually makes a lot of connections for me that you're an artist because that, I think that's a, a lot of the essence of what this, that's what branding is, right? It's being able to see um see that thing that's that that's going to connect that that um that's gonna that's gonna resonate with the people that you're trying to connect with and and that's that's art right it it it, it is art but but there's also see what's interesting what's interesting some i mean i i always find it fascinating to talk to folks who are really just on the strategic side because everything becomes extremely mechanical and it and it kind of ignores the element of wait a second there's a human at the end of this whether they're 
uh, on a, a, in a business setting or a personal setting. So whether it's B two B, B two C, it doesn't matter. There's still there's a human making a decision. There's you and me with our experience. We're looking at something. We and it's either connecting to us. And how do we connect? How do I how do I disrupt you? in a way that you go, ooh, that was kind of like fun, <laughs> right? As that's opposed the to, you want. Like, ooh. Well, yeah. And so to me, that's the, that's the element that's the element of surprise. It's the element of unpredictability. It's the element of kind of like knowing when to just swerve a little bit that way when you expected me to go that way. And you go, that was fun. I have a whole new view of things that I didn't see before. You know, so it's just, it's mm -hmm. so it is using those artistic elements of, you know, it's kind of like a great song. A great song isn't monotone. It doesn't doesn't go blonky plonky plonk a plonk a plonk. It's like okay, well, enough already, you know. So it gives you a little hook, and it gives you a little this, and it gives you all of a sudden you have a nice little passage, and you go, wow, that was awesome. That was when they fell in love and they had kids. Right. And it, well, it evokes emotion, right? Yeah, that's what you're going for. Yeah. Um, what is uh, talk about differentiation a little bit? I I, I struggle with this because. I, you know, my, one of my first jobs out of college was in, in this agency and I was the buyer, right? I was the one that would go and I'd place those, those ads in the paper and on the TV station and such. And it, it was simple, right? You, you know, we could, with our clients, we could do TV, we could do print and we could do, you know, radio and maybe a billboard here and there or something, if it was a political campaign, whatever it was. So you were so you were just on you you just you were on the buying side you weren't you weren't producing any of the content or any of the I, was, I did a, I I ended up doing all of it in the okay. years or so that I spent there so I, I I got started in that department and got to you know it was a small agency so I got my hand in all kinds of stuff yep but it was simple yeah when this was thirty years I'm gonna date myself it was thirty years ago twenty five years ago right yeah it is complicated as hell now <laughs> you know it, yeah. It, if, if you're if you're thinking about it, if you're focused on the product and you're focused on making sure Bob and Sue show up for work and, you know, you're focused on getting those invoices out the door, marketing becomes this sort of afterthought. Right. And, and branding becomes this afterthought. And I think if you think you're a small shop, small business, that it's not as important. Mm. But how do you how do you do it today? How do you differentiate who you are and what you have? Uh, and, and how do you break through all the, the stuff, out, all the noise, like, is what you like to say. As a, as, as, and that's as a loaded David, question. David Breyer, or, or in terms of the cut, my clients doing it. Yeah, as if well. you were advising a company, like let's, let's say I, I run a shop in, in small town USA. Um, how do I do it? Like, ah, okay. Okay. So there's a few things, a few things. It's a, it's a good, very, very good question. And there's a few particular key points. So one is, is, there's this incredible, insatiable fascination with social media channels, right? Right. Ooh, we've got to be on, you know, Facebook. We've got to be on Snapchat. We've got to be on this. We got to and the, the time and, sink. If you, <laughs> oh yeah, it's like yeah, we've got to be on everything, right? And I and I and and one of the things that I really get clients to focus on is I say, look, if you have not worked out what you're saying. If you don't actually have a compelling story, if you don't have a reason and a way and a rhyme that why are you different? Why should I, your potential customer, give a damn about you and what you're offering me? If you haven't worked that out, all you've done now by jumping onto all these social channels is you've simply multiplied the speed and efficiency with which you tell the world we don't know what the freaking hell we're doing. <laughs> okay? That's all. That, so I So I first get them to separate out there's channels of communication, and then there's your brand. Your brand comes before the channels of communication. So that's the first thing, to sift out these two things because they get collapsed. Right. Right? right. So that's one thing. The other key important point is the factor that you and I, at any given moment, we are one search away from if we want to find the best hotel, the best sneaker, the best restaurant, the best coffee shop, the best eyeglasses, whatever. We just type it in and we have hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of options. How am I, as a business, going to stand out in that noise? So one is I need to know who I'm talking to. Am I talking to, like, I mean, I, lo I, love, I love the conversations where I sometimes I'm initially sitting and talking with the client. So who's your client? They say, well, well, women. I say, what women? 
half the population is, of the world. What does that mean? <laughs> you know, what does that even mean? And so um, I'm like, well, are they older women, younger women? Are they women who are married, women who are single? Are they women who like to travel? Are they women who are all glued to their computer all day long? Who and what are they? And, you know, do they have children? You know, all these things. So until you start to isolate who and what you're talking to, it's kind of like a great little analogy that I sometimes will give. And it always hits the point home. You take a father and a son. They go into a showroom, right? And the father's saying, you know what? My kid's turned of age. I'm going to get him his first car. So they see this kind of neat looking, nice entry level kind of, it's a nice red car, kind of cool, cool lines, nice shape. The father's looking at this car and he's kicking the wheels and he's looking, he's figuring what's the safety rating, what's the miles per gallon. The son looking at the same exact vehicle in that same moment with dad, looking at the same car, is thinking to himself, chick magnet. <laughs> so the thing is, unless you've worked it out, like who you're talking to and why, it doesn't make any difference. And only when you've got that and you go, you have a pretty good estimation of your seat point, what they're, who they are, what their values are, what's important to them, then you can start to differentiate. Because you asked at the beginning, this whole differentiation thing, the thing that drove me crazy about all the many books, and there's many more that have been written than I've read, because there's over, at this point, there's over 8,400 books just on branding alone. Forget, if you if you open it to marketing, there's going to be probably 25,000 books. Jeez. But the thing is that literally, if you if you just on the subject of branding alone, it would take you, I think I did the math, and I think it, if you end, end up reading one book a day, every day of, the, of your life, it would take you 22 years, right? <laughs> so the thing, so the thing that happened was I would, I personally was frustrated because I found little snippets here and there that seemed to make sense, but no one sort of agreed on what this thing of branding was. So in response to the 8,000 plus books on branding, I took it upon myself to define what branding was and I got it down to four words. Four words. I'm making sure that my hand is in the lens. Four, four, four words. Four words. Four words. Four words. <laughs> four, four words. Four words. So we got it. We got. Oh, here. We'll do it this way. I'll do two, and you do two. That'll, there we okay. go. There's four. Yeah, okay. We'll do a little plus sign in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Right. 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 Exactly. There we go. There we go. Well, yeah. I'm, all right. So, um, the art of differentiation. The art of differentiation. That's what branding does. If a brand is using words and it's achieving differentiation, distinction from the other ones in the space, mm -hmm. you will you will be successful in that area. If you do the same thing with design, if you do the same thing with color, you do the same thing with imagery, you do the same thing with all those things. And to understand it fully, what's the opposite? What's the antithesis of differentiation? The antithesis is cliches. The antithesis is we've done it better. We're the better answer. We're the cheaper answer. We are. We'll give you. We'll give. We'll give you more for less. Great value. Knowledgeable people. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Excellent customer service. Uh, Local. Stop, stop. Made in the USA. <laughs> you know all that crap. So I mean, it's like, and and I love when people say, and and it's a great question. I mean, if you ever want to crack the bubble of of euphoric hallucination that that can surround a client. You simply have to say, so by the way, you say, so why should I choose you? And then they answer, blah, 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 blah. Say, now, when I actually go to your competition, why do I know they're going to pretty much be telling me the same thing? And how am I supposed to, other than through hiring a psychic, how am I supposed to tell the difference between them and you? <laughs> what, are, what are some what are some good examples and you've worked with a lot of these companies and, and big or small but what, what are some good examples of people who've done this really well um that you've worked with well i well i what, what was i mean a great one a great one is one of the best chocolatiers in america is a legacy chocolates Okay. Before before anybody else was doing anything, they were everybody was talking about this and talking about that, and 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 what would what would your show be if I didn't throw like a a, a well known brand under the you know under the bus just like just just not only under the bus but on, on top of that I threw you know I threw carcasses I threw I just like buried them you know so you know got got a tar truck 
you know. So <laughs> Godiva, right? I used to when I grow growing up, I used to love Godiva. Now I wouldn't eat Godiva if you held a gun to my head, because Godiva is riding on its legacy of the name and name recognition and the brand. If you if I I literally are do you dig chocolate by the way? I, I yeah. Okay, so they do you like really good dark like good I, quality dark. Okay. Yeah. So the thing is, is that I could literally, I could literally, I could do a blind test, blind test. I could have you, I could say, hey, try this and give you one of the most amazing dark, dark, dark chocolate truffles you've ever had, period. I mean, forget it. You, it, you'll, you'll feel like a teenager with imbalanced hormones all over. Again. <laughs> It'll be awesome. I am on my way out to New York. <laughs> and then, and then I would literally give you a, a Godiva, like a truffle. And it would literally taste like chemicals. The, the ingredients they use, the sweeteners they use, the oil, the fats that they use, mm. they are not, it's terrible. And so, sorry, Godiva, but hey, look. Sorry. Sonic sucks right. now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All's fair in love, war, and chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fair in chocolate. <laughs> it is not fair. But the thing is, is so what so what happened was was when they came to me. I did, I did a, a number of different things with regard to blowing up their brand. But one of the things was, it was before people started to get into percentages, we went, we broke out and categorized their truffles by percentages. And they were very, they were like 37% cacao and then 86% then cacao. And then ni like, we literally had a 99% cacao. Now, the interesting thing, I could challenge you, it will be the smoothest dark chocolate, 99% chocolate you've ever eaten, what they do. They have a way of tempering it. They've got their, they have it is down to an art and a science. It's unbelievable. But part of the whole story with them, it was a balance of spun, fun and spunk. And one of the points of difference, here's a great example of differentiation in action. Everybody, now having done work for Estee Lauder and Revlon and knowing what the cosmetic world was, the whole cosmetic world has a mantra. The mantra is let's communicate, let's, let's have an aura of everything but communicate. Nothing. It's very zen. Very zen. And so what happens is, is I was seeing all of these competing chocolatiers. They were applying this sort of thing of let's have an aura. Let's have texture. Let's make sure the paper is cool and it's embossed and it's got this and it's got that and it's tactile. And mm -hmm. does it communicate anything? No. Does it look sexy? Sure. Yeah. But every now all of a sudden when everybody starts looking sexy, everybody starts looking vanilla at the same time. Right. That's the key point. You know, so you got to have the you got to have the enough of a span of, of looking. So what I did is I did on the total opposite side, took the box, and I I was observing this other thing happening at the same time. Foodies love information. Foodies were like falling in love with the Food Network. Foodies were love falling in love with oh, chefs who taught them. Oh, and do if you just do this, all of a sudden your steak will taste oh, oh, wow. so much better, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like they go all of a sudden you can start talking French. Ah, we, 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 I love that. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and so I flooded it with all kinds of amazing bits of chocolate trivia. How do you tell good chocolate from cheap chocolate? Is chocolate actually food or is it actually right. a snack? That it, different little things, fun little tidbits that if you were at a dinner party, you'd go, by the way, did you know? Did you, know? <laughs> you know, and right. literally. What happened with the differentiation of design, differentiation of packaging approach, differentiation of materials, differentiation, differentiation, differentiation. We did a soft launch. By soft launch, I mean the back of their of their counter in their boutique shop was the only place these boxes came. There were no new hours, no new flavors, no new prices, no new, no new anything, no new sexy people with plunging necklines, zero. Right? Right. And what happens is, is at the end of the month, I go to the owner and I say, how'd it go? He goes, sales of truffles tripled 300%. That's a, And this was just based on the same traffic of people that had been walking in who were leaving that on the table previously. Wow. That, that's what can happen. That's uh, stunning, actually. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, was, that was like, that was the point at which I went, holy shit. There's, I mean, I mean, I, I knew that I could design. I knew I could make stuff look better. I knew I could make it sound better. I knew I could frame it better. But this was like, holy shit, Batman! You know, this was a moment. This is just making connection. This is connecting people with the story, right? And and the the making it interesting, right? We well, well, teaching, teaching them something. Well, well, there is that. But you know, but what's fascinating too is. 
you look at this, the greatest brands that you and I know of and respect in the world are not built on a product or service. They're built on values. And I don't mean values of the, of the culture, of the organization and stuff like that. I'm talking about the values of you and me, the consumer. Okay. So, you know, Nike, Nike, that wasn't built by a capitalist who says, you know, I think sneakers are the future. No, it was like they were sports enthusiasts who were like, hey, this is kind of cool. Let's how good can a sneaker get? How good can can sports gear get? Yeah. And so it's built from those values. They they actually those originators embodied and and had the passion of those values as part of their own DNA. So it was coming from that place of those values that already were was existing by others who shared those values out in the world. Same thing with Steve Jobs with regard to Apple. It's like he was all about user experience, right? He was all about that thing. How do I like it? I'm a user. I'm a, I'm a user. How do I like it? How do I like it that, to create things? How do I like it to incorporate? How do I do I like a computer that demands that I have to think like a computer to use it? Or do I like a computer that actually like it thinks more like me? Right. And so, right. you know, so he has, that's what I mean by the, val that's what I mean by those values. What is, and going back to sort of, you know, the if you're a startup or a company now, um, do you do this on your own? Do you help try to figure this out on your own? Do you bring somebody in? What what you know, if you were advise if you're advising company, I know you work with a lot of companies and have seen all kinds of different things here. Yeah. But do you do it on your own? And if and if you if you do bring somebody on, what do you look for in that person uh, to help? Sure. What question? What questions do you ask? I guess. Totally. So, so, um, the rarity is that a, a, someone can do it on their own. That's a rarity because they're usually too close to it. Okay. They're too close to it, either in perspective or they're too close to it, such as my baby can't be ugly. Uh, <laughs> no, yes, your baby can be ugly. And not only is your baby ugly, but your baby's smelly. You know what I mean? <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> It is so, what it is, right? <laughs> so the thing is, is, is you have to, you have to, um, so the, the perspective is very, very important. Detached, I, you know, I almost call it like, like detached passion. You need to have the passion, but you need to be able to be detached yourself and say, okay, I think this is awesome. Mm -hmm. Does it resonate with others? Or is it just my kind of cool thing that just does me, right? Hmm. Um, so... <laughs> so you know so that's where that that's where this thing is is and i would say i would say the questions that i ask is some of some that i've touched upon such as okay why should i as a why should i as a con potential consumer care are you just I, I, a very, very critical thing that I will always discuss with a, with a company? I'll say you're either going to add to the noise or you're going to rise above the noise. If you are the same as everyone else, now you're just now, you, now you're just going, OK, can I outbid them on paperclip? Can I out? Can I can I pay enough more more for shelving, you know, sh you know, shelf where I am on the shelf? Right. Um you know, uh, whatever, whatever. Can I advertise more? Can I shout more? The same stupid stuff that everyone else is shouting. So someone will hear me. Louder. <laughs> you know, so that's the thing. So I, I have a, I have a number of those. It's like, it's like parting of the sky questions so that we kind of go, Oh, um, and I'm always for bringing, I, I'm, I'm always for bringing a company in, that gives a damn about being willing to disrupt because you're going to have to disrupt to a certain degree. How you're going to have to disrupt enough. And the question really becomes how much disruption do you need to get into to actually be heard? Right. Right. It's not a matter of like, sometimes like, well, that didn't work. Well, you didn't go for, we said to go to 10 and you said, as far as like disruption or concept or whatever. And you, you said, well, how about we try two and let's see if we get 20% of the result of 10. No, that's that's a totally different beast. That's not that's not 20%. It's not a mathematical equation. So it's those kinds of things that become that become important to get their wits around. And so what's going to move the dial? What's going to make me care? 
what is going to here's a great one i love this one this used to i mean i've been doing this for 40 this year next year will be 40 years that i've been doing this right mm -hmm. and what happens is is this my first 18 years or so of being in the business occasionally i would be asked they'd say so have you done anything in our industry and that would throw me off. I'd be like, oh, no, I haven't. I, uh, uh, I'd get like freaked. I mean, it was like, damn it. Oh, <laughs> er. question again. <laughs> it, it killed me. It killed me. I mean, I think for about 18 years, I'd never had a great answer. And then I realized, and then I, re then I had done, uh, then I'd done, uh, started to do enough projects. Maybe it's 15 years. Maybe done enough projects that they were, oh, that was, I'd never done that industry before and that was successful. Mm. Oh, I never did. So if that's the case, then what is it having prior experience in an industry that makes it successful or is it actually understanding the principles of why branding works? That was a breakthrough great, point. Great, great. And that, what, what's that? Great answer. Yeah. And the thing that I basically now, the thing that I basically now know is that when people say, have you done anything in an industry before? I say, Absolutely not. And I frankly consider that one of my best actual assets and why I'm actually going to be charging you what I'm going to be charging you. <laughs> because, because I come in, I actually, I actually was, there was working with a particular educational institution. They had a choice between my, my firm and another firm. The other firm had a lot of experience in the educational space. I had very little, maybe, maybe one or two projects. Um, but I had a lot more breath in the in what creating brand, and they were like, "Well, we're really on the fence about this." And I'll say, "Look," I said, "You have to make your own decision, and I'm not going to stand in the way. You have to make a decision that you're comfortable with." I said, "The one thing I will say though is that I don't come in with a cookie cutter solution. That basically we've done it for all these other institutions. We can now apply it to you, and you're going to kind of blend in because my entire philosophy is, right. I'm my job here is to differentiate you." Not to not to apply a template to you that's worked before for other educational institutions. Which is exactly so how am I going to get you to stand apart? Yeah, and they and, and they and they assign the project to us. Uh, that's not a surprise. That's a um, yeah. So I want to get to the book, as you know, um, and I'm also going to implore people. Hey, if you're online, ask us questions. This is interactive. I'm looking at the feed right now, and uh, we need some questions. Um, yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, guys. Hey, guys. Some, some of my peeps. It's like, look, man, you, you saw the you saw the announcement earlier. You saw, you, you know, you were all like, you know, sharing it, peeping it. This is awesome. Da, 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 da. It's like now's your chance. You got me. You got me like on an open fire pit. He, I'm being roasted here, man. This, right. is, I mean, this, is, this is fire grilled briar. It's like let this for free ever. <laughs> so, um, so ask away, ask away, ask away. Yeah, um, definitely. So I, I wanted to jump into the book real quick. Uh, you, you talk about in the book uh, about having to, every day is a new launch day. Uh, what does that mean? I, I, I found that really interesting because I think a lot of the clients I work with, when when the marketing part of it comes up, it's, well, we've got this and we've got all this, uh, other, this collateral out here and we do this and we do that. But it's really an afterthought. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and I got from the book from that part is that, that this is you got to think about it every day. Absolutely. I mean, the body, yesterday's dead, man. Yeah. Yesterday is dead. Yes. It's like it's like, oh, we got, you know, I mean, I, I love I love the the sort of the intoxication with, wow, we got so many, you know, likes and followers and we got so many so many sales and da, 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 and good and that's yesterday and that's great and that's fine oh and here's but here's where it gets twisted those are oh, what what happens is is we get so intoxicated with we got so many closes and we got so many this and we got so many that and conversions and better and signups and this and that, and that, and that which is great now the thing is is this remember you made it happen by something you did before that's, right. That's the result of your action. That's not the reason for you feeling wonderful and now being so happy and proud of yourself. You did something to make that happen. Today's a new day. This is week's a new week. This quarter's a new quarter. The whole deal. It's like, what do we do? Nothing is standing still. Competitors are not standing still. Cultural changes are not standing still. Needs, shifts, nothing is standing still. So, 
we need to be consistently paying attention. We need to be consistently engrossed, attentive, observant. What's happening in the space? What's happening in terms of needs? How can we make it better? I mean, one of the things that I remember that I always just was blown away by, I remember before the iPod, the iPad was released in 2010. Isn't that crazy? Only nine years ago? Yeah. 2010. Phenomenal. So 2010. So before it was released, you know, after it was released, this was kind of like revealed. Steve Jobs in the in the um, uh, sort of development process. Once they were completed, iPad, the iPad, he goes, "Good. Now show me number two and number three. He was already ready to literally make his own creation obsolete because you know what? If he didn't, someone else would. Yep. And that was his genius. Yeah. So it's always like it's always just facing the fact that hey, look, we could be obsolete tomorrow. What are we doing proactively right now, paying attention to all the various things, the people, cultures, changes, competition, needs, changes in technology? What are we doing moment to moment to moment to moment, being frequently almost to the point of obsessed? And that is that to me is the real big difference. Because, I mean, is there you think there's brand loyalty today? Yes. But here's the interesting thing. For those that are listening, for those of, of the of the millions of people around the world who are listening to this particular pub, this episode, the interesting thing I love the I love companies that are like, hey, we'll, we'll lower our price. Now here's here's the ugly truth for those that think that price is going to drive something. You know what? When someone is is buying you for your lower price, they don't have loyalty to your brand. They have loyalty to your low price. And if someone tomorrow comes along and offers it for three cents cheaper, who are they going to be loyal to? They're loyal to the price, not your brand. That's the ugly truth. And so, you know, and it's the same reason why some companies, they just ride in this, this element of complacency. You know, you why did Sears go out of business? Why did Toys R Us go out of business? Why did Blockbuster? I mean, why did Blockbuster go out of business and why did Netflix be so smart in their navigation because Netflix not everybody knows Netflix what they were a freaking DVD delivery service and now they're the number number one producer of TV programming content in the world they outdo Disney they outdo everyone and he and had the vision he had the vision to go digital way before that he he was just trying to put blockbuster out of business i think but it you know but you look at it and you go but, but here's the other thing not everybody knows this, but what was what was Sears in its day? Sears was the Amazon of its time. Or you could say Amazon is the Sears of today. Because what did Sears do? Sears simply looked at it and said, wait a second. There are small pockets in the world. And, and for those that are listening to this who are younger, this is pre-internet, everyone. That means we couldn't, there was nothing to check. There were no followers. There was no keyboard. It's like, let me check. Let, let me check my texts. Let me friend. Let me friend this person. Let me unfriend that person. None of that world existed. So we were very much compartmentalized. So a city would, you know, a place would have some homes or apartments or whatever. And if you needed to get something, you would basically have to actually get off your ass and <laughs> go there, right? Go there, right? But the thing is, is that so especially smaller towns throughout America, they only had two or three stores, right? So all of a sudden, all of a sudden, Sears comes along, and what they do, the brilliant idea, oh, wow, everyone, what does everyone have? Everyone has a mailbox. We could do a catalog, a 500-page catalog, and bring the world to their home via their mailbox. And sell well, everything. Amazon, Amazon took the same exact principle. And why Sears didn't do it is shame on you, Sears. Shame on you. You should have been the one to do it. That Sears... Could have done it, but Amazon, all they did was they looked they asked the same question. What does everyone have? Everyone has a desktop. The desktop is today's mailbox. Yep. So all of a sudden, all of a sudden, they have now made it. Oh, and so instead of shipping it 500 page thing, they have a five million page web, you know, web store, you know, online that you can access 24-7. Right. And you can get anything you want, whenever. Yeah. So. I mean, that's that's it in a nutshell, right there. Yeah. What um, what's your opinion on sort of personal brand versus your business brand? What? See, I, I love I love this question because more people ask me this, and I find it fascinating. I think I personally think it's it's 
it's as irrelevant. That distinction is as irrelevant as B2B and versus B2C. Because the thing is, is that at the end of the day, you and I are still communicating to an individual who's going to make, going to make a decision. They're going to have different drivers in a business environment than they are for a personal. But the th same thing is, is you need to tell a compelling reason why, what are the things that are going to drive that? And you need to communicate to a person that's, it's not, there's no, there's, there's no corporation that makes a decision. It's like, you, know, you, you have to have the right things. I mean, it's like, look, the husband has to convince the wife or the wife has to convince the husband and say, oh, honey, this is why I want to get this. And that, how is that any different than this, this person in charge of this department going to the, the person, you know, in, uh, you know, basically the person is like to accounting and saying, hey, we need an allocation for blah, 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 blah. It's like they're just they're just not they're probably not squirming as much and going, oh, honey. They're, instead, they're going, they're going, uh, hey, they're going, <clears throat> hi, I'd like to. <clears throat> here, here are the facts and figures. And da, 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 da. But the bottom line is you're giving them the ammunition to be able to get buy in. Um, but the personal branding and the core and the versus corporate brand. Bottom line is, is you. To me, stories are like air. We all seem to respond to a story. We seem, you know, to, to a little journey, to something that humanizes something, that takes us somewhere. I've seen lousy personal brands, and the reason that they're lousy is because they're too clinical and they're not human enough. Mm -hmm. And I've seen, and I've seen, uh, and I've seen the same thing on the corporate side, you know, where you have a product or a service. Because I've, I've literally, I've branded people. Uh, products, services, cities, cultural tours, nonprofits, and like global and, and regional and local. And the, the, at the end of the day, we're ultimately dealing with, is this something that successfully differentiates this from the other things that they are? Am I using stories to help elevate that distinction? Um, and it works as much for people as it does for um products or services. I mean, Lady Gaga, I think that she's, she, she is this generation's answer just to the, what Madonna was in the eighties. Right. You know, that, that prop, that sort of degree of like outrageousness, but yet you can't take your eyes off of her. Right. Yeah. I mean, she was the one that showed up at that one awards festival, um, covered in raw meat. Remember that one? <laughs> It was a dress made out of raw meat. I, I remember, and I don't follow pop culture, and I remember. Yeah, and you know, and you're like, oh my god, you know. So and so, you know, she just does. She goes enough outrageous, and now she's become, you know. And I, I always find it fascinating. I mean, she got enough eyeballs on her, so whatever she did, it garnered attention. And and I just think that that's, you know, I mean, David Bowie was was also outrageous. You know, and Andy Warhol was outrageous, yeah. right? Um, you know, I mean, look, I mean, even Famous Amos. You I mean you, you're you you remember Famous Amos, the oh, cookies? Yeah. Oh yeah. So you know, so Famous Amos. I mean, what was it? I mean, it was like it was a cookie, but you had this, you had this tall black. So I believe it was Jamaican, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. And so you had this tall black guy with a hat, and so you had so it's like all of a sudden, you know, what was it? It was a, a, an element of differentiation. When you can take disparate components and bring them together, you know, it it will have a level of success. And if you do it well and you show the relevancy and you have enough continuity and you have enough value and you have enough takeaways, you gotta have you gotta have takeaways. And if you and if you have the good takeaways, it will work for a personal brand and it will work for for a corporate brand. That's a great answer. That's what I was. That's what I was thinking. You might say. <laughs> and, that, and, that, and that's and that's why you're that's why you are by the way how come how, i have to ask how come this isn't called power lunch i mean come on oh my god <laughs> you know i was trying to be clever I, I, here's the thing this came up really fast right i get this email that i i've got this platform on linkedin live only 100 people or so or so have it right and i was trying to throw it together but that's freaking brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was trying to be, I was trying LinkedIn lunch. I was trying to, you know, I was trying to do something with that, but that's brilliant. Uh, uh, any other advice for the show? <laughs> While we're at it. Uh, you can you me the bill later. <laughs> Very good. Um, all right, maybe we'll rebrand. Um, <laughs> I'm only about nine shows in, so I'm, I can do that. There you go. Um, there you go. 
so what is um i know we're going a little long and just tell me to stop whenever if you need to go um you talk about uh, inclusion not inclusion uh, or you have to begin movements with inclusion not inclusion what does that mean oh you mean, oh, you mean not exclusion not exclusion yeah right all right so i have a little yes, trouble with the english language sorry Look, you know, in X, whatever, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's all exchange. It's it's interchangeable. So the thing is, is, the the important thing with that is when some brand, some brands, when they're looking at, oh, we need to be disruptive. We need to shake things up. We want to introduce something new. Blah 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 blah. Some are like, some will approach it in a way that's a little exclusive. It's like, it's not, they're, they're going, they're taking it beyond the point of workability to basically, you could say, look, we've introduced something that is, let me, I'll give you some, I'll give you a context. So let's say, let's say you were, you were doing something that was um, introducing a new, a new microphone. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's say it was a new microphone and you could say, look, here's the deal. Um, you know, all existing, all existing microphone manufacturers are assholes. They're schmucks. They're idiots. They're engineering buffoons. We hate them. They suck, right? Okay. Now that would that be a little that'd be a little divisive, right? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe the wrong approach, but okay. <laughs> now that's ex and 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 that's why we're now launching blah 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 blah. Right? It's like, okay, that, that's one way to spin it. Another way to spin it is say, you know what? After listening to music and podcasts for the last 15 years, we found that, there, that the quality of the recording really made an enormous difference in how much we were able to really immerse ourselves in what we were listening to and enjoying. And because of that passion, mm -hmm. we tried a lot of these other ones. They didn't totally do it for us. So what we did is we said, wait a second. How should it be sounding to our ears? And we then spent the last, you know, we then, you know, whatever. We then spent the last four summers, you know, da 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 da, blah 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 blah. And we have now, we're now proud to release blank. Now that's sort of inclusion because again, we talked about values earlier. Now what is that? Gonna, that's going to appeal to others who go, oh yeah, you know, I've actually enjoyed listening to some and not listening to others. Right. And so I would say that I would say that. You know, that's what I mean by inclusion versus exclusion. You don't want to take something to the point where you're basically alienating others. You want to be inclusive. And that's the good that's the deal. Okay. So I let's let's go let's go to social media here. I've got uh, I'm looking at Facebook Live now because we're simulcasting on a bunch of platforms. Yeah. And uh, Robert Hawkins, I know Robert Hawkins. Robert is uh, got a lot of stuff to say here. Um Talks about the Sears catalog. You lower your price, you lower your customer. Yep. Um, never had a special in our store since Henny Mariah. So I know Henny. Henny said we we've never had a special in our store since 2012. We overvalue and we we we've we focus on value and quality. Mm -hmm. um, let's see if there's a question in here somewhere. Edison sold cement homes in the Sears catalog. Yeah. <laughs> um, Gallo wine sold a ton of cheap wine mixed with soda by branding two imaginary guys, Bartles and James. Uh, that 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 I remember that. Yep, Bartles and James, legendary. All right, let's see anything on Twitter. Um, I don't see anything? I, a bunch of comments, but um, all right. Uh, let's see, we've got anything here on LinkedIn? Uh, just comments. Well, hey, what? What is one truth or, or your best piece of advice you'd leave us with? Um, one that I've been talking with people about of late that seems to really resonate is that that different is better than better. If you are playing the better game, like we're the better, fill in the blank, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. You are still in the same category. You're still playing according to the rules that have been done. Right. Why subscribe to the rules as they have been done? 
Right. That's only be, that's all that's all it's only because those are the rules and game game parameters that have been done today. Who's to say that you can't all of a sudden shift it around? So to me, it's different if you shake it up enough in terms of what you stand for, what you do, really hitting it out of the ballpark and a number of different fronts, raising the bar, doing things that no one ever thought of before. You know, I mean, it's like that takes courage. That, yeah. that takes courage. It takes courage, but it also is a, it's 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 a high dose of entrepreneurialism. I mean, it's like I mean, I forget what they what what uh, what's his name the the founder of FedEx was told. It's like you can, that's not even possible, you know. And 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 he disagreed, you know. Mm -hmm. And that became an empire. Or or you take or you take Hagen Dazs. I mean, I love I, I love asking people about Hagen Dazs because you know the Hagen that guy that was that no very few people know the actual origin that wasn't created by some sort of you know. Scandinavian, Norwegian, you know, bunch of elves or something like that. It was a Russian immigrant in the 1950, I think it was 59 in the Bronx, by the way. And the guy was about to go out of business and he basically as a last ditch effort, eh, let me name it something exotic and, and double the price of what everyone else is actually, what actually is, is buying or selling it for. People won, first of all, he couldn't keep it on the shelves. Second of all, people were convinced that his actual, that his actual, he changed the recipes, that it tasted better. He's like, no, I didn't. And just because he had a freaking Hagen dazs with the omelet, with the two, the, the, the two, two dots of the A. And, you know, I mean, well, look, I mean, we, we know, having been around the block, we know what a well placed omelet can do. And so, fair enough, right? <laughs> but, um, but anyway, but that's so to me, it's like it, it, he shifted it up or he basically became almost a new category of the thing. So to me, different is better than better. And don't try the better game. You're never going to be able you're never going to out feature. I mean, of course, you have to have valid features. and You got to be on the playing field. But to if you think that that is the only thing we're going to out feature, we're going to out feature, we're going to out feature. Oh, well, they do it. They, they have a five year warranty, five year warranty. We're going to do a 10 year warranty. And they have a you know, they have this and they have this. And, you know, it's like, come on. What can you act? That's lazy, actually. Yeah. See, that's almost like going, that's almost like who's dictating your marketing plan? Your com your competition is because all you're doing is you're looking at what they did. And now you're looking at how you can re respond to it rather than going, wait a second, let's step back. And so different is better than better. I think that alone is a powerful, powerful thing. If people really got an understanding of that, because I can challenge any one of those the individuals that are listening to this on the on the different channels that you look at the last choices you made in in, in products or products or services that you bought there was something different of that thing mm -hmm. yeah it may have been a feature it may have been a this it may have been a that but it usually is a combination a little bit of a snowball effect an, a, a, an accumulation of things that almost to the point where it shifts it in its category shifts it in the needs that it's actually satisfying and changes the game. That is the way to win. Wise words, man. Wise words. Hey, you know, um, everyone, uh, this is uh, lunch times on LinkedIn Live, uh, soon to maybe be rebranded. <laughs> and uh, if you want uh, us to come to your event and bring it live to the world, uh, particularly on LinkedIn, uh, get in touch. I think this is a great opportunity now that this platform is here for for us to to come and be part of your event. And also, David, uh, how can people get in touch? I know that there's a free ebook on your site. I know yep. you speak a lot. You you there you're there to to help companies do their thing. Uh, Absolutely. How can they find you? I know it's uh, riseabovethenoise.com. Rising. Rising. It's rising. Noise, yep. It's rising, rising above the noise, R A S I N G. So they can definitely go to go to risingabovethenoise.com and you know, definitely you'll see the free ebook there. And so that'll subscribe you to the blog post. You'll get you'll get the weekly blog post and stuff like that. Um, definitely hit me up on LinkedIn here. I mean, th this LinkedIn is uh, is really kind of in an exploding phase in its growth. Right. Um, if you if you haven't gotten this, this book right here. Yeah, get this, it. Get it. it. This belongs in your library right there. Exactly. This belongs right here in your library. Seriously, this is, you know, it's it, it, Damon John. Okay. Damon John from Shark Tank. He wrote, wrote the forward to it. Grant Cardone says I'm a freaking genius. Ted Rubin, my buddy. Also, I, 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 basically, 
This is 30 years that I will guarantee. If, you, if this does not actually save you at least two years to four years off of like stupid mistakes, you let me know. I'll buy it back for you. Okay, that's that's how confident I am from. Do that. <laughs> that's so, okay. but but do do that and yeah, and just reach out. I mean, if there's any, if you have any questions, if you're kind of like, hey, blah 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 blah, if you're doing a startup, if you're rebranding, if you've lost traction. You know, that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to help companies blow it out and stop being just slaying mediocrity, man. Slaying the mundane. Yuck. Oh, and <laughs> yeah, you bring up a good point. Even if you, you catch this not live, you watch it after it's uh, you know posted, still put a, a, a comment or a, a question on LinkedIn. Dave yeah. and I are on there all the time. We'll get to yeah. it. We'll answer it. Um, so just don't think just because the, the broadcast is not live that we won't get to the question, we will respond. Um, Absolutely. I think we responded to 40 or 50 posts last night. Um, so, um, yeah. we, we will be responsive and thanks for joining us and, uh, like or share this, uh, and share it with others. And, uh, thank you, David. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thank so you much. so much for having me. I, I love, I love being on power lunch, man. Great show. Power lunch. There you go. It's our, you just did it. You did it. <laughs>